Welcome to another episode of DD on the Spot. As always, I'm your host, Ryan Johnson. And before we get into it with our guest, well, everyone, you should recognize our guest again. We have Corey Butler back on the podcast. Normally, we don't have him on this early. I think it's only been like three months since we last had her on, but I'm just going to go right into the story that I that I told her right before we started recording as to how, how this came to be. So I was celebrating my little brother's birthday. I think it was, uh, I don't know exactly what the day was, but I had just gotten home and uh, after having a few drinks and I turned on the TV and then just scrolling through the channels and all of a sudden ESPN was world's ultimate strongman. And I was like, Oh, that's, that sounds interesting. So I turned to that. And then next thing you know, I turned it on at the exact moment that Corey was on the screen. I was like, for one second, I was like, did I drink a little too much? And am I just like imagining things or what's going on here? But then, but then, you know, after I realized that, you know, like, Hey, I wasn't that drunk as I thought I was. And I was like, Oh my God, that's her on the pot. And I was like, that that's so amazing. So I was like, obviously after I saw that, I was like, we got to have her on and talk about that. Cause that was just an experience. I mean, it was all the way in Dubai everyone. So, I mean, just, being on the opposite end of the world too. And, you know, just being able to compete and do all that stuff that that's just so amazing. But again, you know, Corey, we cannot thank you enough for coming back on the podcast. Yeah. Thanks for having me. Well, to f- first get started off, how did, you know, the whole process of the, the whole, you know, world's ultimate strong man, how did that come to be? You know, did you have to qualify for it? Uh, what was the preparation for it? Like just, yeah, we'll just get right into it. Yeah. So, um, this was their first World Ultimate Strongman has been around for a short bit, uh, but up until now they've only had a men's circuit. So uh, I met the last podcast we did. We were talking about Clash on the Coast, which is where I set my American Axle record, and I met the executives for World Ultimate Strongman at that contest. Um, my boyfriend Bobby Thompson has already com- had already been competing with them, so he introduced us. So I got to know them a little bit there. Um, there had been, at the beginning of the year, there had been some kind of uh, leak, not really leaks, but like teasers that they were going to have a women's show, that they were going to put it together. Um, and then, of course, as kind of the Eddie Hall Thor fight came into fruition, uh, it kind of became like in conjunction with that. Um, it was supposed to be in Vegas, and then it got moved to Jacksonville because of some stuff surrounding getting the the fights certified. And then, of course, COVID decided to take another ramp at us, and it went um, from Jacksonville to Dubai. So uh, I got I got a Instagram message, I believe, from Mark Boyd, who is one of the one of the the big guys over at World's Ultimate Strongman, asking if I would accept an invite to their first show, um, which, of course, you know, try to try to play it cool and do all of that. Let me think about it for a second. (laughs) (laughs) Turning cartwheels. I got to check my schedule, make sure. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Turning cartwheels. I'm trying to, like, type the message at the same time, the response. Um, So obviously, you know, a huge honor to be considered for an opportunity like that like uh, of all of the strength athletes of all the the ladies that I've competed with and even haven't had the chance to compete with yet I got one of those invites um so that's kind of how I do believe they're planning to do or maybe actually they just had their first qualifier so the first show was invite only and now they're going to start to open up some qualifying spots for the next show um so they're actually based out of Dubai. So that's how that happens. Like all the, when it was in Jacksonville or going to be in Jacksonville, they were having a hard time getting athlete visas for some of the UK competitors and the German competitors. Um, and because they're based out of Dubai and Dubai really doesn't have much for travel restrictions. Um, we had to have a negative PCR test, PCR test, I think it's called, uh, within 72 hours of flying out. And then a negative PCR test that same 72 hours before getting back into the States. So, I mean, we didn't have to quarantine. Um, They have a lot of different, uh, you know, umbrella companies. So they're kind of have some connections with hospitality. They had some connections to get a venue. Um, They have gyms uh, there that they own. So it was, uh, it was, I guess, easier than canceling the show completely. So I know there were a lot of people in the States that were bummed that it wasn't going to be in Jacksonville, Florida. And I, and I do believe they're planning to do a show in the States at some point, but it was kind of in that, like the venue was starting to cancel things and it was either cancel the show altogether or try to find a, uh, a friendly location. So I got a trip to Dubai. 
Hey, you know, no complaints there. And we talked about it last time. Like, what's that like, you know, walking around looking the way that you look in the States, but in Dubai, that's a whole different story because first of all, that's a whole different country with whole different standards and whatnot. And first of all, just being a white person and walking there, you're going to get stares, but being a strong man competitor, what was that experience? Like just walking down the street. So the people, you know, for the most part were, were honestly really great. I, yet you did, you know, uh, Andrea Thompson, I got to know her pretty well and her and I and Bobby, um, Melissa Peacock and her boyfriend, Isaac, were all kind of walking around the mall and a couple of kids stopped us and asked if we were famous and asked if they could take. So they had no idea who we were, but because we look the way they do or the way we do, they assumed that we were somebody they would want to take pictures with. So I think that is just like nobody really knew, you know, what we were there for, or who we were, but because we look so outside of the norm, um, you got a, you got a lot of requests for, for photos and if you were famous and a lot of stares and, but for the most part, the, I mean, the, everybody there was super accepting, um, really nice, really hospitable country as, as a whole. And when it comes to, I mean, we talked about last time too, about how some like normally ahead of events, you know, or ahead of the shows, you know, what, what like what the events are for this, how did they give you, you know, a heads up on what's going to happen? Cause I know it was like invite only as part of that. Did they tell you like, this is what we're probably going to do for events? So we did know four of the five. Um, it was a, a max, or sorry, a log press for reps, a yoke carry for distance in 60 seconds, um, a farmer's carry for time, the mystery event, and then the Atlas Stone series, which is what you saw, which is the big cement balls that you're loading to a platform. Um, the mystery event actually was a, so much fun. It ended up being um, like a train car kind of apparatus that was a push and a pull. Um, I did not execute that event well, but I really enjoyed that event. Uh, so yeah, we we knew most of them and the events didn't change too much from when they were announced from Jacksonville. Um, so we got a good amount of of training time on the ones that we knew. And they, I thought they were great, you know, very, very well balanced events. The show went fast. They put us through, you know, usually your five, six events over a day or even, you know, America's Strongest that I just did was split over two days. It was five events in two days. And this was five events in about two and a half hours. And they were heavy events for the most part. Like, so the, the girls did two and a half hours and the guys, they were shooting for that same, that same time frame. So it was, I mean, it was a, it was a heck of a challenge. Like it was a tough show, super well run though. Like everything, um, I could not give enough shout outs and thanks to the the guys at World Ultimate Strongman because they just everything ran from what we saw I'm sure there were hiccups and things but ran really smoothly um I I have zero other than maybe needing a few more minutes to to get some air (laughs) I have no complaints oh my god so how the hell were you able to even lift those you know big boulders up after you know doing all those other events for me geez i'd be like do one event a day or something to do that all in two and a half hours that's even more impressive it was it was crazy um you know i I, we were talking to a lot of a lot of um the past guy competitors and they were like this will be one of the hardest shows you like you will ever do and they were 100 percent right um i didn't i i enjoyed it i really did but it was super fast i mean to do that that kind of those kind of events and that kind of load in such a short amount of time is, was just crazy. It was a totally, totally new experience. How much time did they give you ahead of time to sort of get used to the settings? Cause obviously like you're going to have a new sleep schedule. You're going to do all that. Did they give you like a week or so, or how much time did they give you to sort of get yeah. readjusted? So I left here on Labor Day Monday and had to fly to Washington DC. Um, and I stayed overnight there just because flights out of the Midwest, like unless you're in Denver or you're in some kind of, you know, really metro airport, there is nothing getting out of South Dakota that's going to get to East Coast in time to fly internationally. So um, it was a 14 hour straight shot to from Washington, D.C. to Dubai. Um, So we got there would have been Wednesday Dubai time because it's they're 10 hours ahead of us in mountain time. So we lost basically a day. So we were there that Wednesday, the 8th, and didn't compete until that following Friday. So they they flew us out really early. Um, man, I, I tell you what, I've never experienced jet lag, but that was that that was a whole 
obstacle in itself. It was worse coming home, honestly. Um, but yeah, the, you know, it was okay trying to, you don't get much sleep on the plane. Um, but tried to, we got there early in the morning, Dubai time, like 8.30 AM. So tried, you know, took a little nap, but tried to stay up and then start acclimating right away as far as eating schedule and going to bed at what a normal time would be, you know, Dubai time. Um, and it didn't really hit me too hard till like day two or three. And then I was like falling asleep at the dinner table. It was, uh, it was, it was a, a new experience, but by the time, yeah, luckily they, they get that, you know, they, they planned for that. So they got us all out there. Most of us out of there, there were some that had some travel snafus, but, um, got us all out there and acclimated. We stayed for the, you know, Thor ended up fighting Devin Lariat, um, instead of, of Eddie due to his injury. But we went to the fights the night after they set us up with, with tickets to the fights. And it was, it was, I felt like a princess, like just treated so well. Um, you know, they fed us, hotels were all set up. Uh, it was, it was amazing. Like the sightseeing and stuff, they kind of gave us suggestions for doing that kind of thing. We did a safari. Um, I got to snuggle a penguin in one of the malls, went to the desert to pet a penguin, figure that one out. I've always want. I've always wanted to touch a penguin. So you know what? Screw you. I mean, this is ridiculous. You got to. You got to swallow. But no, that yeah, that is awesome. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah, that it is was so so cool. They're one of my favorite animals. But what was the what was the menu spread like at the hotel that they're feed? Because when you're feeding a bunch of strongman competitors, I mean, they brought what they have like everything. Yeah. So um, it was very similar. I don't know if you've ever been to Vegas, but it was very similar to like a Vegas buffet where they had, you know, they had like a a salad bar type area, and then there would be like just a two, a few different um, lines of food, lots of, you know, lots of different things. Um, no, no ham, no pork at all. So it was like all turkey, bacon, uh, chicken sausage, stuff like that. But they usually had like a pasta station, they had like a carving station. And it wasn't just for us, it was, you know, all of the guests at the hotel. Um, in the morning, they had like an, an egg station, they'd make you any kind of eggs you would want. Um, lots of, you know, pastries and different, di just a whole different, I was surprised that they didn't have like a, a cuisine that was native to Dubai. It's kind of a melting pot of a bunch of cultures. Uh, so the food was very eclectic. Uh, they really liked their Italian food over there. So there was always, you know, a pasta station and, um, had, uh, espresso machines, set up for for every every buffet which i definitely took advantage of uh but it was all yeah really really good food especially for a, a you know a buffet style we did eat off property a few times um found that i really like turkish food there was a really good turkish restaurant close to the hotel so it was just a i mean it's dubai is its own like little world it's just a very surreal very warm place <laughs> is that where the world's tallest building is it is. Yep. The Burj. Um, Please tell me that you at least, you know, took Cause I could just even seeing photos of it. I was like, how's that even like standing up? Like, I don't, I don't understand it. It's insane. It's um, I, I didn't go up in it cause they, they were charging, they charge a pretty ridiculous amount of money to go to the top. Um, we found out kind of later that there's a coffee shop, like halfway up that you can get into as long as, and you can, you can hang out as long as you buy, you know, a, a coffee or, or something like that. So, I would probably do that if I went back, but it was, I want to say it was like $250 or something like that American to go to the top, um, which would have been super cool to see. Don't get me wrong. But a lot of the days we were there, it was super humid and kind of hazy. So didn't know how good the view was going to be at that time. Um, I, there were things, other things I wanted to put, you know, that money into, and they do have a reportedly like the elevator goes from the bottom floor to the top in like 45 seconds. Uh, but one of our taxi drivers did say that there's a, somebody that's building an even bigger, an even taller oh, building. Yep. It's supposed yep. to be like 160 some stories instead of 130 or whatever the Burj is. So, but it was really cool. It's really pretty at night. You know, it's all lit up and glitters and it's, it's gorgeous. And the architecture there in general is, is bananas. I've got a, a I think I put a bunch of pictures on my Instagram page of like the lobby of the hotel and and different things it's it's just bonkers on my phone i have a page saved of world's tallest buildings and like the ones under construction like i keep aware of all ever since i went to the willis tower 
what well, it was called the Sears Tower back in the day in, in yeah. Chicago and I went to the top of that and I didn't want to stay up there too late too long but you know when I was up there because <laughs> it's 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 kind of like see through four floors and you're like yeah you know it's not let's kind of let's let's go mom and dad come on now we've been here long enough we've been yeah but that's you know yeah geez that is just and I mean did they tell you ahead of time there was going to be on ESPN and they had all that coverage or you know, we had, we kind of rumored or heard rumors that ESPN was going to pick it up. Um, but we didn't know a time frame. Like I posted, uh, in my story that I knew rogue fitnesses, YouTube channel was going to stream it. And then, um, core sports who is uh, associated with world's ultimate strongman was going to stream it as well. Um, but to be, you know, I had, I had a, a buddy that had messaged me a video, him and another buddy of mine were sitting at Top Golf, you know, drinking a beer. And there I am, I'm like one of the string of TVs. It's just such a, such a cool, I've been in the last, what, three months, I've been on ESPN twice. I mean, like literally you guys had a prime time spot too. It was like from seven to 11 that they gave you guys. So that was, yeah. yeah. And what was the second time you've been on ESPN for? Um, so they, they replayed uh back in august they replayed the world record attempts that we did in south carolina wow man that is i mean yeah because yeah that was just so unexpected because i had no idea like there had been no mention of it i was just flipping through the channels and all of a sudden it's like oh this is on like i never heard that this was ever so yeah that is yeah that must have been that must have been so amazing and i mean what was that atmosphere like for you as competitors too because like everyone's kind of in the same boat whereas like you know it's not like the Brits have to travel all the way over here and the Germans do, or it's like, you kind of all have to sort of meet in a spot where you're not really familiar with everything. Yeah. Um, I, I think that a majority of those girls are, are very seasoned competitors. So they have traveled, you know, that was my, this was my first international show. I've never, never done one internationally. So it was a very different, whole different level. I, I'm not sure. I remember much of the, the walkout or, you know, the first event, just because I was so freaking nervous. But they, they were all very, I mean, we, we all obviously had our nerves, but very composed. Um, it really was, I think all of us agreed, it was really an honor to be a part of that. Such, such a huge leap for, for strong women. Um, really getting, you know, that, that notoriety and that treatment, um, that recognition. I think we were all kind of in awe of the whole experience. And now I've worked, you know, like some 16 hour shifts of like loading boxes and stuff like that. And I know how the dead feeling is, but did you have like someone carry you basically to your bed after doing a two and a half hour competition, doing five events? Like, were you even able to walk? Yeah. You know, it was, um, I didn't hit that. They, they talk about adrenaline dumps and that's for sure a, a real thing. Um, but it was, we actually, you know, I didn't crash. I think we ended up staying up until like two, three in the morning. Um, cause it was late in Dubai, you know, it was, we started competing, I think at four in the evening. So it was, it was pretty late. It was like six 30 when we were done. And then the guys started like, right, yeah. right within there, maybe by, maybe by seven o'clock. Um, Did they we, tape we, delay it for here then? Um, I think it was the, the time difference. Okay. Yeah. Um, but I, I do think that they re I know they replayed yeah. it a couple of times that on ESPN. I don't know that it was, I, I, I'm not sure if they showed it live or not. They may have initially, but I know they replayed it. Yeah, because I was going to say, it would have started like at 5 a.m. your time then if they would have done like the whole thing. And I'd be like, why, yeah. would you, why would you put these people through that? Like that's, yeah. That is ridiculous. Yeah. So um, it was like, uh, I want to say 11, 1130 when we left the venue, got back to the hotel. And then we just kind of all got together um, downstairs at the hotel and just kind of hung out and chatted and, and that kind of stuff. So it was I mean, it was, it was awesome. It was, but when you hit that, that wall, I definitely slept in that Saturday morning. That's for sure. And how late did you stay after the competition before you came back? Um, we didn't stay too long. Uh, you know, we had the, the male competitors kind of went, they went after us, waited for them to kind of pack up and um, we all got a shuttle back to the hotel. So it wasn't, you know, I guess there, there are a few, you take pictures and you shake some hands and you do some interviews and things, things of that nature. Um, but it probably wasn't more than half an hour. I would guess after the show was done that we were on our way back. What was that like telling your friends and family like, Oh, Hey, I just got a message. I'm going to Dubai in a little bit, you know, so I'm going to be gone for a while. <laughs> yeah. I was so excited. I think I told like every single one of my friends, I'm like, Hey, guess what? I get to go to Dubai. Um, 
I have, I'm pretty lucky. I have a super, all of my, you know, gym, gym family um, was super supportive. Uh, my mom helped take care of my kiddo, uh, which I, obviously I, I couldn't have done that without her help. Um, so everybody was my, my, I, my eight to five that I work gave me that time off. Uh, so it, it definitely, you know, it, it takes a village. So it was. Uh, imagine if your job was like, no, Corey, we're sorry. I mean, you got to come in, you know. <laughs> so I, I thought about that and I'm like, hmm, what are we going to do in this situation? Am I going to be finding a new job? <laughs> Definitely the thought crossed my mind. Oh my God. Yeah. I cannot imagine a boss just being like, yeah, sorry. You know, we're going to have to crush your dreams and, you know, yeah, we got to have you. It's like, I could picture like the office space guy being like, yeah, if you could come in on Saturday, that would be fine. Yeah, <laughs> right. So, but uh, luckily, I mean, he's, I work for a pretty understanding, pretty, pretty great guy, um, pretty great company. So, uh, but, but the thought, like I had moments of <laughs> if they say no, and they deny me this time off, am I going to stay at this job? <laughs> no, I mean, that's just, and it's just so amazing. You know, just even in like a three month period that we haven't talked that you've done, you know, all of this stuff. And what was the most memorable part of the trip for you? Oh, wow. There are a lot of most memorable, um, of the competition itself, it was probably that, like I've always had this, this grand image of being able to walk out or be announced and walk out holding the American flag. Um, it's, it's been something that's been like a, a bucket list item of mine, as you, as, as they say, uh, but just being able to have my name announced and from the United States or representing the United States or however they said it, be able to walk out on the competition floor with that flag on my shoulder was, a, a pretty damn cool experience. Yeah. I remember, yeah, I saw, I saw that. I think they replayed it after the, the event when they were talking about you, they replayed the entrance and I was like, wow, that's amazing. And I, I'm, you know, if they would have said South Dakota, people would have been like, what South Dakota really? But, you <laughs> right. know, so, you know, they had to, they had to really say, you know, from the U S but no, that's yeah. And I mean, yeah, I mean, just, just the fact that you have been to Dubai and back in the last, you know, it's just, it's just shocking for me. And, what was that like? Also, we talked about like the sleep going to Dubai. What was that like coming back and then getting readjusted back to your normality? It was worse coming back. I, I felt like it hit me harder coming back, to be honest. It took me um, almost almost a full week to really get back on schedule um, and feel somewhat normal, which was not ideal because I, I had a competition three weeks later. Um, so it was... It was not great timing, but again, I, I chose that for myself. So that's nobody's fault but my own. But I felt like it did hit me harder coming back. Um, you know, you at that like I figured with the time changes and everything, like if we would have stayed on Dubai time, by the time I got home and went to bed, it, I had been up for like 42 hours or something of that nature. Because we left, you know, we leave Dubai at 2 a.m. So you have to be at the airport two hours early. So then you, you know, you're flying and you're, you're coming back that 10 hours. So you're basically gaining that day back. So yeah, I, I, when we put it all together and then I had to fly back home from the East coast to, to South Dakota. So, um, when I kind of calculated it all, it was like 40, 40, 42, something like that hours that I had been awake. Yeah. I live literally four miles away from the Minneapolis, St. Paul airport. So I have friends that work there and they they hit me with all that math stuff all the time where it's like, we got to figure out our time to get that. And I'm just, I'm, I'm zoned out the entire time. I'm like, Oh wow, that's interesting. Good for you. But yeah, I, it's a whole conundrum of like learning to, and I've driven to pick up so many of my friends from, from that damn air airport, but yeah, oh, it's, I it's, bet. it's an experience in and of itself. But are, so are you done competing basically for the year? Are there any shows left or are you just sort of taking things easy now? Or what, what's your status like now? We will see. There have been rumors that Wuss, World's Ultimate Strongman, is going to do another show in December. Um, it hasn't been confirmed. I don't know where yet, so I don't know if that will happen. That would be a pretty quick turnaround time frame. But I don't have, um, I don't have anything finitely planned out as of right now. We're kind of do a little bit of an off season, a little bit of a build. I'd like to to work on my static strength a little bit. Um, the Hopefully the Arnold will happen in March. I'm still kind of holding out hopes that maybe I'll get a, a wild card spot there. Um, that's also something that I've, since I started 
you know, really competing like at a, a you know, national level have wanted to be on that, that Arnold Pro stage. So uh, that's kind of up in the air. Um, you know, the, they have, I believe they've rescheduled that Eddie Hall Thor fight for March. So, you know, whether or not uh, World's Ultimate Strongman will do another show then. So, yeah, nothing, nothing really concrete. Everything's kind of up in the air for me at the moment. I was just laughing because I found it ironic that the World's Ultimate Strongman, when they acromize it, is wuss. And it's like, you don't, you don't want that really representing your name. It's like, come on now, really. But no, that's, and that's, you know, yeah, it's with the shows going. So, yeah, I mean, that's, that's great. And you mentioned like the static stuff. So what is one lift that you think that you're, wanting to improve on the most in this off season? My deadlift. Yeah. Um, I enjoy deadlifting. It's just not my strongest. It's not my strongest lift statically. Uh, I did really well. I was super happy with my performance on the, the deadlift ladder at America's strongest. Um, but that's definitely, definitely something that takes time to build is a very technical lift. Um, so I would, I would like to spend some time, um, really focusing on getting that lift. I, you know, I, I would like to, at some point have another shot at that Axel world record again. So obviously I don't want other things to fall off. So I'll keep, keep trying to build the overhead strength as well, but area, as far as room for improvement would definitely be, definitely be my deadlift. Yeah. And I mean, yeah, there's, I mean, I'm not even going to, I'm not even going to tell her about anything improving because like, she's literally moving trains and stuff like that. And stuff like that. So I'm not going to tell her like, this is what you need to improve on most. But I do, I do, th- I do, you know, I want to contact the people that did the world's, you know, ultimate strongman competition and say, you got to include that fish toss that she did in Alaska. You know, that, oh, if that, God. that should have been one of the, I even texted her there. I messaged her that. And I was like, if only they would have had you guys do that. But yeah, I mean, that we is. We did a, a funny little video. One of the girls put together, like uh, Jessica Fithin, she put together and asked us all to do like a a funny little bit on what we thought the mystery event was going to be. And I, uh, I said tug of war with a camel. So maybe that'll get thrown out in there in some future, future event. but yeah. I don't know. Those camels can be tough. Pe- those camels can be tough. I don't know about that one. <laughs> I rode one. You rode a camel. Yep. In Dubai. <laughs> I held a Falcon. Okay, literally, yeah. I've no, I've said this to my friends since high school. One of the side gigs that I've always wanted to have is I'd want to be a falconer where I could literally just put my arm up like this and just have a just have a bird on command, just come and just fly on my hand that I could just yeah, that would so be the falconry greatest. Falconry is huge in Dubai. Yeah, it's a, a very very uh, popular hobby. Um, I don't even want to say hobby; they take it very seriously. So we went on a safari, and part of that safari was a falconry show. And then we got to like, we got to hold the glove and hold the Falcon and it was, it was pretty cool experience. You represent the U S you don't wear that glove. You go just bare hand really. And let that thing claw <laughs> into you and, and just had take they, it. Yeah. Had they, well, yeah. the, did, the, did they have any bald eagles legs. there? What's that? Did they have any bald eagles there? No, okay. no. I saw some owls. We got to see some owls, but no, no bald eagles. Okay. So the scariest encounter I've ever had with an owl, I was out for a bike ride. This was like five or six years ago. And I live in the suburbs too. And you know, there's on front of someone's mailbox. I thought it was like a wooden owl because it wasn't moving at all. Like I thought it was just like a little thing. Cause it was, it was dark. It was at night. So I was just walking up to it. And then all of a sudden next thing I know the thing just took off. Like, and, and I was like, and I was like three feet from it and it was the scariest thing ever. Like, I, Oh my God, I'm never doing that. I'm never doing that again. But yeah, I'm a huge, I'm a huge fun fact owl guy. And you know, I, I, yeah, I'll, I'll start spewing facts. So I got to get on to the next question. Otherwise I'll just, this will just be coming a whole owl podcast, but I'll send you some pictures. I got pictures with a couple of owls. Well, I just got to give one owl fact and continue to talk about it. So owls, they actually, when they swoop in for the kill, they fly, they're silent. That's one of the reasons that really helps them. They're the only animal that like, it's with their, with their wings flapping. It's actually, it's not silent. Like you could, like, if you were like, have a recording thing, like you'd be able to pick some things up, but to the human like ear it's silent like that's how they're able to like do it gracefully and those weird things can move their head around like 360 degrees i don't oh, trust, yeah. i don't trust anything that can do that are you kidding me anything that can see me from behind yeah come on that's not that's that is that is just ridiculous and, i mean the competition the, the competition side of these events though too when they when you were in dubai did did you have like did they like put you in that training center and have you guys train and stuff or did they have like a separate area for you guys to train? What was that whole process like getting used to like what's gonna happen? So they World's Ultimate Strongman has a gym that they own. Um strong strong gym. And they so they had 
like shuttle buses from the hotel every day that we could decide if we wanted to go train or not. They had all of that set up for us. The venue we actually competed in was a mall that's unfinished. So we actually, the floor that we competed that you saw us compete on was a, an ice rink. There's going to be an ice skating rink in this mall. And uh, obviously it's, it's unfinished, still under construction and things. So it was just an empty ice arena is where we actually competed. But yes, we did. Um, we got plenty of, you know, usually like the week before you're pretty much just moving blood and things anyway. So, but there were a couple of days at the end of that week that I got there. Um, I got to kind of touch the yoke that we competed with and the farmer's handles and got to move some blood. We actually went to one day, um, we went to Larry Wheels gym and did some deadlifting at his place and met him, a uh, super hospitable guy. It was really nice to kind of get to little bits of chatting with him. But yeah, they had a great, they had everything pretty much at our disposal that, that we wanted. Um, and funny thing about Dubai, anything you want and need can pretty much be brought to you at any point in time. Like you can have gas delivered to your home for your car. You don't have to go to the gas station. You can like, app like uber people to come to your home and wash your car like there's you yeah it's it's pretty insane dubai it was a it was such a surreal experience like you and it's not outrageous like you pay the cost whatever the cost of gas is and it's like a five dollar delivery fee it's not like it's a 25 dollar upcharge to for somebody to bring that to your home like it's it's reasonable there has to have been a time where someone had someone come and wipe their butt basically after they went to the bathroom. I mean, that's, 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 that's what I was thinking of. I was like, I'm going to be the ultimate douche there and just be like, okay, okay. No, but like that. Yeah. But days are a big thing there. Oh, yep. I've always wanted to try one of those. I mean, I've had people that go to Japan. They're like, why don't we have these things here? But then it's just, especially after the COVID with all the, you know, toilet paper shortage. I was like, well, yeah. you know, there's a solution for that, but <laughs> oh my God. Yeah, that is. But having, yeah, I could not imagine calling someone, and especially us being in the, from the Midwest. First of all, we are the most people, we're the people where we just feel bad about ourselves if we called and had someone like come and do so. So I could not imagine like being like, oh, hey, I need gas. Come and give it to me. Yeah. So that's, yeah, I, that's just, but you also gave me an idea too when you were talking. This needs to be a thing. Strongman competitions on ice. You, you wear ice skates and then you do your things. Talk about the oh, level of difficulty man. right there. Are you kidding me? Yeah. yeah, that would be, there would, there would probably have to be multiple disclaimers and waiver forms. Oh yeah. Stuff. Oh yeah. Like we're going to tell you like no one's breaking records at this and there are going to be some injured oh, no. people, but we're going to have fun watching it. Okay. It's going to be, it's going to be entertaining. I could not imagine yeah, doing that, doing that lift that you guys did on ice skates. That would actually be, that would actually be, you know, that would just be amazing. But one of the things that I wanted to talk to you too, cause like I watched those when you lifted the, those big rocks, like. I don't get how you guys lift it because like you're basically hugging it and then you kind of got to like roll it upwards. That whole process to me just sounds just like, I don't know. Like for me, I've never lifted anything that's had me ever have to do that. I'd either, I'd either just put it on my back and then do it. Or you just like, just going from a gym and you just do it like that. But when you're lifting something like that, like what strategy do you use for that? Because that's something that's just so foreign to me that like a lifting technique like that. So with Atlas stones, generally you're allowed to use tacky. Um, so you have that, the, you know, the sticky stuff that you'll put on your arms and your hands. Um, and it is kind of like, I mean, a, a, a bear hug, essentially. The the lighter stones, you know, at the beginning of my run, you can see they were lighter. So they didn't require me to necessarily put into my lap and regrip and kind of use quite as much hip drive and force to get them to the platform. Um, but there, there, you know, there definitely is a um, a, a, a technique once you, especially once you get heavier, you're kind of almost rolling them up your shins, putting it on your lap, sitting with it on your lap, repositioning your arms. And then you're, you're basically using core and, and hip and butt and trying to, to load that to the platform. Um, it's, it's a whole different animal. Uh, it, you know, it makes it even harder when you throw things in there. Like sometimes promoters will do tacky list stones. So um, that, that is definitely exponentially but it's, it's all about, you know, where you grip it, how you grip it. But it's, yeah, you just hug that sucker into you and uh, you, you pull and you pray. Well, I was just thinking, yeah, because like if you, I've seen videos of like people doing bench presses and they mess up and it falls. If you mess up doing that, you're basically just going to like fall on your back and have that thing all over you then. Like it's. Yeah, yeah. there's definitely been. Um, I just saw a, a comp fellow competitor of mine 
like was doing a medley and loaded, was in the process of loading one and the previous one had rolled off the platform and like hit her in the shoulder. Um, you know, I, I've had friends that have dropped them on their, their toes cause they miss, you know, they miss load and you just don't get out of the way fast enough. Um, another fellow competitor, you know, she was, she was lucky. She had hers was just doing some extensions with them, some holds and extensions. She wasn't loading it. And when she put it down, the tacky on her shirt stuck to the tacky on the stone and she went forward with the stone. So uh, mishaps, I mean, definitely you, you do, you have many, much, much room for error in, in that particular event, but, um, it's, it's a pretty cool event. I enjoy it. I don't know why, but talking to you like literally brings back all these flashbacks of stuff that have happened to me. Like I just had another one when we talked about the foot thing. So when I was going to a baseball game, this is when I was like, you know, like 13 years old, my mom dropped me off. I was out of the car. She ran over my foot driving away. <laughs> my front foot. Now, luckily I had my cleat on it. It wasn't too bad. I went out and I still pitched that game. And I think, I, I think we won that game or something like that. But yeah, so I, I've had anyone who yeah, I've known what it's like to have a, your foot run over and she wasn't just like slowly going over. Like she whipped that thing. So it was, yeah, that was an interesting conversation that we had to have where it's like, you really love me that much, mom, if you're, really, if you're doing that to me, but you know, Hey, you know, it, things happen. Yeah. You know, it, it, mistakes, mistakes definitely do happen. And you know, it's just, I, I just can't imagine what you've been through in the last three months. I've said it already like three times on here, but it's just when I talked to you last time, I said, when we talked to you a year from today, where'd you like to be at? I would have, if you would have told me, you know, I'd be in Dubai and doing all that stuff. I'd be like, okay, someone has a really big imagination there for them. But you know, it's just, yeah, just the amount of stuff that's happened. And what is that like for you? I think not even like legacy lies, but just to be remembered. I mean, you were a part of something that was the first, like this thing could take off and they could do this, you know, for the next hundred years really. But what, what's that like to, be real, be able to, you know, like no matter where you place on anything for the rest of your career, you can always still say, you know what? I was a competitor in the first ever ultimate women's ultimate strongman competition. I think it's pretty incredible. I mean, who doesn't want their name to, to go into the history books with, with something like this that they enjoy and, and love to do and hope to inspire more to do. Um, I, you know, it's been, I think all of us ladies just really are so excited about this push forward or hopefully this push forward that it's going to give uh, strong women as far as the, the competitions and more opportunities to compete in events like this. Like it's just, had you asked me or, you know, would, would I be doing this from a year from now or, or had hopes to, I mean, this is beyond, this has been beyond my, my wildest dreams. Um, body's a little beat up. You know, I, I would not recommend three, heavy shows in a span of two months, but, uh, you know, you, you, you take the opportunities and they're presented to you. So I'm just going to mention again to everyone, me and her, we're both from the upper Midwest, so we don't really expect that much out of our lives. So to have some, <laughs> to go to like Dubai and stuff and do all that stuff, like that's a, even if you're from like LA, that's a big deal. But like, especially being from the upper Midwest, we're like, we're kind of resigned to a life that's not going to be really as, as exciting, but you know, it's our own, you know, it's, it, there's, there's some, there's some benefits and there's some drawbacks, you know, everyone's, but just being, having that, you know, like for me, just having that Norwegian mentality, like Midwestern or where it's just like, literally like you're just resigned to kind of things where you're just like, yeah, you know, but it's, you know, that's, I mean, yeah, just the, just the changes that have happened too. But yeah. So, I mean, yeah. How are you, like, I asked you how you're able to walk to bed, but after doing all those three shows, like, are you just still kind of on a little bit of adrenaline, like right now? Like, how are you still functioning? Because, you know, there are athletes that play baseball for 162 games and they're probably less dead than you are right now. Uh, you know, you, I mean, you, you get used to it. It's all about, you know, make sure that you're sleeping, make sure that you're eating properly. Um, my body is definitely feeling it a little bit. I'm a little beat up. I'm a little, no injuries, but a little fatigued. You know, I, I've definitely put myself through the ringer. Um, but I also enjoyed every minute of it. So it's, it's a little different, you know, like professional athletes that they enjoy what they do. Um, those, those 160 some games that baseball players get a year. I mean, that's, that's what they love. Um, so, and I feel the same way. I mean, it's nice. It'll be nice to have some downtime to not be so focused on specific events that I need to do. I can have a little more variation in my training and, um, things that, you know, I look forward to that. Uh, not, not quite grounding, you know, grinding myself into the ground, getting ready for this, that, and the other thing. Um, but other than that, I mean, I, I feel, I feel pretty good for, for all of the, 
cumulative weight lifted and things that have happened since August, um, I feel pretty damn good. Please tell me that they had like top notch masseuses and stuff like that in Dubai, because that's, I mean, after going through the ringer like that, I mean, that's the first place I would have went to. Be, I, I wouldn't have even done it to sleep. I'd be like, just carry me to the masseuse right now. They had a really, really awesome um, like bodywork specialist uh, at a, a gym um, local place there in town. He, I can't, he may have technically been a physical therapist, uh, but he was absolutely amazing. Um, I did see him for a session. And then they had at the gym, they had like a cold tub, sauna, and that kind of thing set up for us as well. So that part of it was nice. Um, but yeah, it was, they, they checked, checked all the boxes. We did, I did get an illegal tattoo. Don't, don't tell anybody. Oh, is that the Dubai skyline? It is. So, uh, tattoos are, are illegal in Dubai. Um, but one of our, don't declare a fatwa on or anything like that. (laughs) (laughs) One of our, uh, our athlete coordinators, you know, she has a, a, somebody that she's used in the past. So we were like, Hey, can you make this happen? So we literally got tattooed in like some guy's house friend, friend of mine and I, but we had to have congratulations criminal. (laughs) <laughs> I mean, if that's the worst thing I do in my life, yeah, yeah. do it all right. Hey, hey, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, tattoos, I mean, I, that's, yeah, that's what, I, I was going to get, tattoos are illegal, I was like, God, that would be like half the population here would just be like declared, yeah, right? so that's, that's insane, so that, so my tramp stamp then, damn it, I couldn't get one then, damn it. No, I'm just, <laughs> well, you could, you just have to do it like under the table. I, I just can't, I just can't have any beach wear on then really then at all times, I'll see. I mean, they don't, I mean, there's a lot of people that are, are tattooed, that have visible tattoos. Oh, they just get, can't really catch you in the act really, basically? I, I would guess, like, t- it'll, you know, there's not, no tattoo shops, like, set up, set up around town and things like that, like, they that's not that's the part of it that's illegal but no you don't get arrested for having one i've always wanted to try like the middle eastern ice cream because i see all those videos on instagram of like the the people that do like the scoop things and they like trick people before they give them the ice cream did you please tell me you got at least some of that middle eastern ice cream that people have always been raving about i didn't we had um there was a lot of ice cream places but they're all i mean like baskin robbins i did have gelato one place that was really good but it's pretty i mean they had like a um, they had a Krispy Kreme, they had a Baskin Robbins, they had a Cold Stone. Um, you know, obviously there are McDonald's and Burger Kings everywhere. Um, but yeah, I mean, I had, I had some, some gelato, but that was about the most, I, I mean, I did, I mean, I had some other things, but that was, as far as desserts go, that was. I'm talking about all this. I got to go get a small cone from McDonald's after we're done talking. Right. I'm even talking about this. <laughs> Jeez, there's one that's like half a mile from me. So of course that's what I'm going to go do tonight. Ugh. But um, yeah. And just, I mean, like with all this exposure and all this stuff that's getting, where would you like to see even, you know, with all the stuff that's been happening, where would you like to see the, you know, the strong men women's division at within the next year? I would just like to see more of it. I think, I think this was a, a big step forward. And, but would like to see, you know, I know World's Ultimate Strongman has talked previously about doing three or four shows a year. If we could be a part of those three to four shows a year and get the streaming on, you know, say Rogue's YouTube channel, ESPN, continue to get that exposure. I I mean, I think that momentum is going to just continue to carry itself. More people will stumble upon it or more people will watch and, you know, tell their buddies and pretty soon you're having like the Super Bowl party of strongman in your living room, you know, watching, watching world ultimate strong women. So please tell me that like you pick up your phone after you're done competing and there's like a thousand messages. Cause I've never had that happen to me where it's like, what's that? Like, was, was your, was your inbox just flooded? So, um, I didn't have service over there. I didn't opt for the, so my phone worked when Wi-Fi, when I was on Wi-Fi. Um, so once I got back, into but back to the hotel and got wi-fi it was a lot of like i think i got i don't know like 100 new followers or 200 new followers like that day on instagram and a lot of super sweet messages from you know friends and people that i know and other competitors congratulating me and telling me how cool it was and that they watched and things of that nature um so yeah i i do believe i don't know what the if they'll show it on espn again 
but it is still available to be seen on use uh, on Rogue's YouTube channel, and I think Core Sports still has it up as well. Yeah, and well, we didn't get to it. Yeah, absolutely, and we didn't get to it. And what was the final placing for the women's competition? So I finished fifth by by a few points. Um, Annabelle Chapman out of the UK took first, and then turned around. So that's a crazy story. So she took first. That was Friday. She flew out Saturday and then competed in, was it Britain's Strongest Woman or UK's Strongest Woman? I can't remember which one. And took first there as well. She had a good weekend, that girl. She is she's a crazy, crazy strong. I mean, they all are. Um, but to We need to up, find her, hold her down while I take some of her genes or like DNA or something like that out of her and just like inject it into myself because... Right. I could never imagine. Yeah, that's a special type of human being that's able to do that. And she's so sweet, too. I mean, all, all of the girls. I had such a good time. Um, there were a few of them that I hadn't met yet. Of course, I know, you know, I've, I've watched these women. I have um, hadn't met them yet. So there are a few of them that I got to meet and really got to spend some time with. And uh, I'm happy to now, you know, call them my friends. But everybody was just so awesome. We had eight of us there. Um, and I ended up about, about middle of the pack. Like I said, I made some made some execution errors that I, I wish you know would have gone the other way. But that's I mean that's why we that's why we play the game, right? Um, you never know what's going to happen. And again, we got to reiterate it's it was two and a half hours. Everyone, I mean, like come on, like two and a half hours. Yeah. That's and, like, and I mean yeah. to be ranked up there with the strongest women in the world, quite literally. I mean. I'm not, I'm not going to be mad about fifth place. Yeah, that's like for baseball, if the MLB all of a sudden had like a triple header day or whatever like that for a team, you're, you're not telling me by the third game some of those guys are just like, okay, what the hell is going on? Like, this is just, <laughs> come on now. But 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 yeah, and you know, I asked you this question last time and I didn't know that it'd be so soon, but if when we do talk to you a year from today, and it might be even sooner because who knows, you might be going to like Germany or France sometime next month. Who knows the way th- the way the way your last three months have been? You know anything's possible. You could be like William Shatner and going to the going to space within the next month. I I have no idea. But where would you like <laughs> to be at in your life? What are some goals that you'd like to have achieved when when we talk to a year from today? You know, I I would like to do another international show. Would be really cool to say that I have been. You know, an, another another international show would be awesome. I would like to take another crack at that. Axel world record. Um, I think those, those two items are definitely on my bucket list. Uh, I've kind of just started um, working with a company called Strongman coffee. Uh, I have my own coffee blend. So I'm excited to see, you know, where that's going to go. Um, a portion of, of those sales are going to go to the, um, hotline for getting folks out of abusive situations. So I'm excited about that venture and we'll, we'll see, hopefully that picks up some momentum um, and, and new and exciting things to happen there as well. So I guess as far as the top three, that's, that's a pretty lofty, lofty top three, but we'll, we'll go with that. I've had coffee twice in my life. Cause as you can tell, my head would probably explode if I ever became like a frequent drinker. I'm just one of those people where it's like, it's for the betterment of the public that I really, really, you know, don't do that. But yeah, that's, and just, yeah, just having all those things ahead. And what was I going to, Oh yeah. I was going to ask you this because like I had one girl on that had, you know, in a really bad RBF. Like when I messaged her to come on, I was like, Oh, she's going to be like bad. To talk. Like, I didn't even know just cause, just cause like from her photos, the nicest person ever. Do you ever get that? Because like you are like so soft spoken for someone who's as big as you are. Do you ever get that a lot? Like when people finally meet you, you're like, I was not expecting this. Yes. <laughs> Most definitely. Um, I did the, the very first podcast I did. Um, I, I think there was an overwhelming amount of, she's so nice she's so nice. Like, so I, I mean, there's either a stereotype there that, you know, strong women are, are bitchy or I just have a really good RBF. I, or, no, sure. I no, I just think it's because like mainly just as a man, whenever you see someone that looks like you do, and if it's a guy, you automatically just assume that like, Oh, they could kick my ass. Like you gotta like, like you gotta like be respectful to them. So I think it's just no matter what gender you are, just if you're big and huge, like people are just like, Oh, 
Like, I don't even want to get them angry at all or anything like that. Like, we're just gonna. So I think it's, I think it's just, and then when they realize it, like, oh, they're not just out here looking to beat up people like, like I would be if I was that big or something like that. I think that's like what a lot of people just have their little fantasy where they're like, oh, if I was that big and huge, you know, no one would ever mess with me. So I just think that's a whole like mentality thing. But yeah, as soon the moment I first started talking to you, I was like, I didn't have any expectation, like native expectations for you, but I just thought I was like, she's a lot more soft spoken than I would have thought. And she seems a lot more, not, not nicer, but I was just like, just a whole different vibe because yeah, the, yeah, the girl that I talked to, I mean, she was like five, three and she was like the nicest person. I've, one of the nicest people I've had on. And I was like, I would have never guessed that in a million years. And that's for me, unfortunately, I'm one of those people where what you see is what you get. Like, I don't have any like decline, like just from taking a photo I mean, you're going to be like, Oh, that's Ryan. Like, that's what he's, that's what he is. That's just my vibe that I give out. So I can't really hide too well, but you know, yeah. And then I like, think a lot of people have like a, like you said, a, an idea in their head. I mean, we're, we're in theory professional athletes, but when people see us most of the time, they're seeing us on a competition floor. So we are a little more serious, a little, you're smacking each other in the back. You're getting yourselves hyped up and stuff like that. Yeah. Right. So it's, it's different than, I mean, I think sometimes it gets lost that we're actual people like that's not necessarily how we walk around all the time. Right. Yeah. No, absolutely. And, and I mean, lastly, we're getting close to the Halloween season here. I mean, this podcast will be up, you know, around Halloween time. Someone of your size and stature, your costume is limited. So you got any, are there any go-tos for people that might be in the strong woman competition that, you know, really, cause I mean, it's like, yeah, you're not going to have like a Cinderella dress or something like that. Like you're going to get, you, you, you need to be creative with your costume. I mean, I, I would have to probably get it specially made, but I could rock a Cinderella. Or That's true. I've been told, um, uh, you, you just can't really have like those puffy things on the side though, really, because it's like, you got to right. show off when you're like looking like that. Yeah, yeah. I've been, I've been compared to some of the redheaded princesses that Disney has. So like the brave character, little mermaid, you know, things like that. I, I could pull that off. Um, I slipped into my, my son decided he wanted one of those inflatable T-Rex costumes for Halloween this year. So I may have slipped into that just to see if I could get it on. So that's an idea. My go-to was Lieutenant Dangle from Reno 911. That was my that was my go-to in college <laughs> to go to. Just the short shorts and everything. Oh my god, that was the biggest party hit of all time. Just just even me showing up like that, and and especially since like I told you before, my lower body is struggling. It went perfect with that costume because like you'd see the small legs and stuff like that, and the bigger upper. Bo- so yeah, that's that's my go-to yeah, there I for. I even pull that off. You know, yeah, I, I'm happy with that too. But then I also did um. I dressed up as Barney one year, the dinosaur, but that was just a huge costume where I could, I, I could really, and then of course, you know, like this year, I'll probably just go as like a lumberjack or whatever. Whenever I grow out a long beard, you know, I'll just do that. But yeah, so that's my Halloween thing. But again, you guys, we cannot thank Corey for coming on again. And just, you know, I was even like, oh, is she even going to come on now? She gotten like too big and famous for this podcast now when I was mentioning her, but I was like, yeah. no, of course, of course not. But like, that was like my fear. That was like my fear. Cause like I've had like Olympia winners on. And I was like, oh my God, do they even want to associate with peasants like me or something like that? But no, it's, it's, but that's, you know, it's just so great to have you on again, especially after all you went through. And yeah, I'll leave the link to anything like that shows your competition that you did and stuff like that. And I saw when, the, Hey, at least when I saw you, you won, you won when you, or you beat that other girl when you were doing the, when you were doing the thing, but that's just even to have competed at that. I mean, it's just, that's just so amazing. And yeah, we cannot thank you enough for coming back on. Is there anyone else that you'd like to have a shout out to before you wrap it up? Um, you know, as always my, my sponsors that, that support me and help me out. Um, Cerberus strength USA does all of my, you know, my wraps and my sleeves and, Grip shirts and all of that stuff. Um, Butler 10 will save you there. Um, Depth before Dishonor, they make some pretty amazing t-shirts, really cool designs. Uh, link in my bio on my Instagram, um, pro strong woman underscore Corey underscore Butler. Um, Ragnarok Strength Equipment, Kratos, you know, all those guys help me out a ton. Um, shout out to you know, World's Ultimate Strongman for all they do and for Strongman Corp for all they do. And just, uh, I, I will forget and am forgetting, you know, a, a million people that make all of this possible. But yeah, um, look me up on Instagram. Uh, I will send you the links. We can put the links in for the YouTube for Rogue. If anybody wants to actually watch the event, it's a pretty good one to watch. It moves pretty fast. It's not a lot of, not a lot of downtime. Absolutely. And again, you guys, I mean, we cannot thank her enough for coming on. Yeah, it was great talking to you again. I look forward to talking to you again sometime soon. Yeah, me too. Take care. All right. This is Ryan Johnson, DD on the spot, signing off. Have a great day, everyone.